to speak. I'm a poet, I'm a performer. I had, and oh, I want to echo what Dred Scott said, and um, I want to conjure the words of June Jordan, who I first saw about 30 years ago when she was alive, a uh, poet, and she said, we need a revolution. We need a revolution, we need a revolution, amen. So, we need a revolution. I had just begun to relax, celebrate the marriage equality ruling. I had just begun feeling with Obama. I was watching Ali in trouble off the ropes, delivering to his opponents the rope-a-dope, my father's eyes, excitement. I was just beginning to breathe air, feel exhilarated at images of Joe Biden and President Obama running down halls of the White House with rainbow flags like boys with kites soaring. I was just beginning to forgive deaths of my brothers to AIDS, not forget there should still be tribunals for them and every woman abused by the medical system. I was just beginning to churn a corner on Mike Brown, Freddie Gray, Trayvon Martin, Eric Garner, the massacre at AME, not think of it all every day. And then the police killed this young black girl in custody in Texas, claimed she committed suicide, and I remember we're a war nation. In war times, I imagine how James Bayard Nina, Nina felt seeing a nation turn its dogs, teeth, gas, hoses, bullets on children, adults, humans. I can't stop thinking about Steve Biko, his battered face. They say he hung himself too. The world's outrage. Who will pray now for us? America. 16 years old from the suburbs, Boston. I go into the city shopping with my cousin and friends. We'd venture into the Boston Commons, the park. There were hustlers there. I didn't know then with the setup table. They played some sort of game with shells, hid money under a shell or a plastic cup, moved their hands real quick, made it purposefully look so easy, naive. 16 years old, I bet. $50, a lot of money for me then. They made it look so easy, you just had to pick the right one. Of course, it was rigged. I lost, felt dizzy, sick to my stomach, lost my gaze. On Tuesday night after this election, I felt the same way, heisted in a shell game. Walking outside on Wednesday in my neighborhood, a white woman who barely ever speaks was crying, asked, what do we do? And I answered earnestly, a teacher, an artist, a professor who always tries, I don't know. And later I walked up the street, a white man in an SUV with the window down drove by. He wore an expensive business suit, had a big brown cigar, like when babies are born, expensive, seen only in gangster films like Goodfellas or The Sopranos after a kill. He looked smug, happy, and that's when I realized the Trump presidency is a hustler's game, ballers club, players only, pimp paradise, wives with teased hair and lots of plastic surgery on the white BET. They made it all look so easy, like a, cho like a choice. Who knew the American dream was a side hustle for big businessmen with all their ugly red, white, blue striped flag merchandising available at Walmart and Target. I'll never buy into again. Who knew? Freedom was a marketing idea, consumer product, hallucinatory toy, drug, cooked up as in some Rovian, as in Carl type of laboratory sweatshop maintained by the architects of our apartheid. Freedom like air if you're white and male and rich enough to keep breathing. Today I started to cry as I wrote to my students, knowing that in everything so far I've tried to protect them and realizing that there are places in this world that even my maternal hands can't reach. In Poland, the war our ghetto against a Nazi fascist regime on the southern plantations, in fields, in Hades, on shores of Africa, uprising the 60s, the streets, James, Nina, Bayard, Miriam, June, Nikki, Lorraine, Audrey, Pat, Malcolm, Martin, Betty, Seiko, the unnamed artists, poets, teachers, always opera. 